I decided I actually want to try and like look good for this video just to remember what it feels like and honestly I miss it not gonna lie friends it's ash welcome back to another video on my channel so for today's video i'm gonna be talking about sororities i don't usually like talking about my sorority just because i don't want to put information out there and then it's misconstrued as like oh this is how it is for every single greek organization in the nation because that is so not true and i actually feel like where i go to school greek life is pretty different just because like it's a city school, Greek life is small, and all of that. But I know that a lot of schools are doing fall recruitment. Hopefully, if things get better. I figured a lot of people out there are probably like staring at that registration button and just being like, do I want to do this? And you have a lot of questions, which I get it. Like, <laughs> I had so many questions going into it and I kind of just, just like, whatever, I'm gonna do it. I hope that I can help give some perspective as to what it's actually like being in a sorority from a sister's side. I hope that this will be informational and educational to all y'all. So, all y'all? Did I really just say that? Before we get started, I just want to say if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button somewhere down below. Give this video a like and follow me on all of my social medias. My Instagram will be floating around the screen somewhere and the rest will be linked in the description. And also be sure to check out my new music because Oh my gosh, I have so many new songs that I'm very excited to share with everybody. So yeah, be sure to stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's get into what you should know before going to sorority recruitment. So like I had mentioned before, just a little disclaimer. This is all based off of my personal experience. I know for a fact that things are different wherever you go. So just be sure to listen to your school guidelines and your school's Panhellenic Council guidelines to know like what you actually are in for when you sign up for recruitment. This is just like me talking about my experience, like actually being in the sorority and what it's like. Just, yeah. So I actually have a list pulled up on my phone of things that I wanted to talk about because there are important points that I want to make and my phone is about to die. So we're gonna stick it in the charger. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is the time commitment that it takes to be in a sorority because I definitely had this concern when I was going through recruitment and I remember asking at least one person in the house like, what is a time commitment? Like, how do you balance this with schoolwork and like other things you wanna do on campus? And the basic general answer is you can be as involved as you want to be. Personally, after experiencing it firsthand, I feel like the better way to explain it is that it's all a balancing act. Like everything else is, you need to be able to balance everything in your life. But there are some mandatory things that you're expected to go to just for being a sister in the chapter like you have to go to chapter every week you have to go to recruitment you have to go to get philanthropy events or elections or anything important like that it's not set in stone like you have to go if you really have a conflict like class or work or a family emergency something like that then obviously they'll be understanding you just have to communicate that and make sure that your reason is valid like you can't say i need to skip this to study because the expectation is you know that this is a commitment that you have so you need to work your study schedule around it if that makes any sense and another thing about these mandatory events is that if you don't go to them then you lose participation which if you lose enough participation then it revokes your privileges to go to the fun extra things that you can do like formal or date party or sisterhood events or anything like that so you want to make sure that if you want to have fun with your sisters and like make new relationships, then go to the mandatory events so that you can go to the fun ones. And that being said, for these extra like fun little events that your sorority hosts, those are the things that are optional. If you don't want to go to them, if you can't make it because you, you need to study for a really hard exam the next day, then don't go. That's what I mean by it's a balancing act. Like There are some extra things that you don't have to go to and you can miss out on if you need to study or do more schoolwork or something, but the mandatory important events you need to make time for and you need to just work everything around that another thing i will say is that so many people are doing it i have balanced my sorority my schoolwork my work work my music promotions and music video filming and producing and all of that and i do other clubs around on campus too so if i've been able to balance all of that and so many other girls and 
hundreds of different chapters across the nation can do it, then you should be able to do it too. And if you're really struggling, then you can go talk to someone and if it really ends up not working for you, then you can just drop and there are no hard feelings. Because personally, I feel like everyone wants to see you succeed. If not, that is a whole different problem that you should probably address. But everyone will want to see you do well. They don't want you to struggle. So you will be fine no matter what path you choose to do. The second thing that I want to touch upon is the financial commitment that it is to be in Greek life because I will not lie to you. Being in Greek life can be an investment. My dues are sort of up there, but I will never say that my dues are unreasonable when you consider the amount that I'm getting back from my sorority. And what that means is I feel like the money that I'm paying is worth the relationships that I'm forming, the events that I get to go to, the experience I get for like leadership positions and my community service hours that I'm doing, I feel like all of that is worth paying some money to be part of the organization. And obviously people will feel differently, people are in different financial situations, and everyone is very understanding of that. If you're having trouble like managing the payments and the due dates, you can always set up like a payment plan with your sorority treasurer finance chair like whoever is in charge of handling all of that there will be no judgments because let's be real we are all <laughs> broke college students and we are all just trying to get by so everyone understands that people's situations are different that being said if you really do not think you can afford it then you should definitely take that into consideration if you're planning to go through recruitment because these dues are a requirement another thing i will say is that sororities are usually transparent with what they expect from their members because i remember when i was going through recruitment they had a full day dedicated to like explain the philanthropy and also explaining the dues and what that breakdown looked like. Every chapter will do things differently. You definitely want to make sure that once you know the number that they expect you to pay, then make sure that you know exactly what you're paying for and know like why their requirement is what it is. But yeah, overall, I feel like the financial situation with being Greek life can be daunting sometimes, but you will be fine if you ask for help and everyone figures out a way to make it work. The third topic that I want to touch on is friendships and forming relationships when you join a sorority. We all know that saying that when you join a sorority, you're paying for friends, which is so stupid and not true. Like, what do you think happened? You think my big just slid me a 20 and was like, yo, be my little, actually not a bad idea. I'm kidding. That's a joke. Please don't come for me. Ah! Okay, but like a little side note, my future little is gonna be so spoiled. Like, I got you, homegirl. Anyways, what I wanted to say about forming friendships and relationships in Greek life is you are not going to be friends with everybody. And that is that is totally fine because if you think about it logistically, like my sorority has over a hundred girls. Those are a hundred different people, a hundred different personalities and not everyone is gonna vibe with everybody. But if you choose the right sorority for you, then you will find your people eventually. Even if you're not like BFFs with everybody in your chapter, even if you don't hang out, you should still be able to have a conversation with them. You should still be able to like see them on campus and be like, a. You're not going to be friends with everyone, but you're going to be friendly with everyone. Also, another thing that people have asked is, is there drama? And like, you would think so, right? Logistically, like with all those girls in one place, you would definitely have some conflict. But <laughs> I don't know anything about it. Like, I'm very out of the loop with that kind of stuff. Not gonna lie, kind of glad about it because drama is just super annoying and petty. Unless it's The Bachelor, I eat that shit up. I mean, I feel like it's bound to happen. Just even outside of a sorority, if you have like a dorming situation or any other club that you're in, there's definitely gonna be drama because that's what humans do. So I feel like it's one of those things where you just roll with the punches and the positives will outweigh the negatives. Just be kind to everybody. Okay, the fourth topic that I'm gonna touch upon is housing because housing is very different wherever you go and you definitely wanna make sure to ask about that. When I was going through recruitment, houses had different like requirements for living in the house and how that whole selection process worked. For my sorority, it is a requirement that every sister lives in the house for at least a year. They say that the best time to do that, especially if you're going through recruitment as a freshman, is to do it sophomore year because Drexel has this like two-year residency requirement that you have to live in a Drexel dorm or a Drexel affiliated housing 
set up for your first two years at the school and the Greek life housing counts as one of those and it's also the cheapest option on campus so I decided to cop that deal and I'm living in my house next year. You definitely want to make sure and check if your house requires you to live in your sorority house at some point and for how long because you pay for the housing. That's just how it is. Even if you're not in a sorority, you pay for your dorm. If the sorority housing is more expensive than another option on campus, then you definitely want to take that into consideration. Overall, I feel like it'll be a good experience. I obviously haven't been through it yet, but from what I've heard, the people in the house are really close and I'm excited. Another thing I want to say is that Sorority housing is so different wherever you go just based on region because obviously I live at a city school and we don't have room for all these giant mansions that you see. I think my house fits like less than 20 girls. That's definitely going to be different from the houses you see in the south which are like full on mansions and it can fit basically the entire sorority. So that's all I have to say is just make sure that you get a really good understanding of the housing requirements. Okay, and the last thing that you should know before you go into sorority recruitment, this is kind of a touchy subject, but it should definitely be talked about the hazing situation. From my personal experience, Drexel takes hazing very seriously. They are very intolerant of it. And I remember the weekend after we all accepted our bids, we were required to go to this presentation that was all about anti-hazing. And that, ooh, that really hit home um, because it gave like a lot of statistics about people that were negatively impacted by hazing. And it showed us like how to recognize when we're being hazed, what is considered hazing. And they told us that not only does Drexel have regulations and restrictions against it, but the state of Pennsylvania does too. So that like put us all at ease that it's a very serious offense if it's ever done to us. So yeah, personally, I didn't really feel any anxiety with the hazing new member process um, because there wasn't any. And literally it was all just like going to meetings and going to the events that were required of us and learning about the sorority. And that was it. I can't speak for other chapters at my school and around the nation because I didn't go through their process. If you experience hazing at your school, then definitely be sure to report it. Also, before you go into it, make sure to like read up on your school's policies with hazing because like I said, Drexel is super, super strict about that. Not even with Greek life. If the freaking dra dragon Jedis, which is a real thing, they really do play with lightsabers and cosplay Star Wars. But yeah, if any club outside of greek life or in greek life haze their new members they would get into so much trouble and they would face the exact same consequences so be cognizant of like your personal limits and what your comfort zone is and know how to stand up to peer pressure and if you personally feel uncomfortable doing anything that they make you do then don't go through with it tell them you're not comfortable with it if they say no you have to then just be like i'm a dick because you don't want to join something that puts you through any emotional, mental, or physical discomfort as an initiation process. I feel like that's just really stupid and unnecessary. Hopefully your school is really strict about it and they crack down on that really hard. And if not, then you need to be diligent with yourself. So that was all I have to say about what you should know before going into recruitment. I really, really hope that this helped you guys and maybe gave you like a better idea of what it's like being in a sorority and like what the expectations are coming from a sister's side. So yep, that's about it. If you made it to this point in the video, you are a very good human and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Let me go through